Hello everyone, my name is Carla Smiley. I am the analytics intern for this fall 2017 season and my manager is my friend. Um, just a brief agenda for today. I'm going to start off with a little bit about myself. I'll talk about my daily roles and responsibilities. Then I'll jump right into my projects. Um, some takeaways, a few adventures that I had here uh, during my time at Clorox and then I'll uh, make some shout outs um, with some thank yous and then I'll open the floor up for questions. Alright, so let's start off with about me. Um, I was born and raised in Huntsville, Alabama. I'm a student at Tuskegee University and there I'm majoring in economics and finance. A few things that I'm involved with on campus, I am uh, the president of Beta Gamma Sigma Honor Society in my College of Business. Also, I'm a peer mentor at the College of Business. I work a lot with underclassmen and we try to help uh, them sustain success while they're there at their time uh, at Tuskegee. And another one of the things that I really enjoy doing, I'm heavily involved in SGA, and I served um, as class treasurer for the past three years. <laughs> Next, I want to talk to you guys about some roles and responsibilities that I juggled on a day-to-day -day basis. So the really cool part about my internship is that I was primarily on the analytics team, but I did support some teams um, on the GSS side as well. So on the analytics team, um, I really got a chance to develop really good critical thinking and problem solving skills um, through the different softwares that I got exposed to. Definitely some softwares I wouldn't got to touch while I was in the classroom. I worked a lot with um, Tableau, um, Excel. I got exposed to SQL Server and Report Builder for the very first time while I was here. And um, through those different softwares, I got to touch, I got to look at a lot of different, um, a lot of different sets of data and um, a lot of those data belong to a lot of different subfunctions here at Clorox, so it let me like expand my knowledge of the supply chain process from the end to end uh, view of that. And also, um, on the GSS side, I got the opportunity to um, help manage the GSS support mailbox. So um, on a daily basis, we would see different requests come through that mailbox, and those requests included everything from price updates, um, outline agreements, um, different Clorox workflows, and also on the GSS side, I was responsible for uh, a few different sets of monthly reports for the raw and resin teams. And um, I got the opportunity to um, implement some agile initiatives there, and they, those will be set um, and they will continue while I, once I leave Clorox. Um, so this is just a list of some of the projects that I got the opportunity to work on while I was here at Clorox. Um, and I want to highlight my first one. and. The first one is the GSS Analyzer and the role I played there. So um, my work on the GSS Analyzer, it started at about the beginning of August and um, it went live on the 27th of November. So the GSS Analyzer, those cool Tableau uh, dashboards that you see here, were developed in, um, they were developed by Greg Martin and they, um, <laughs> I'm sorry, they, they uh, report out a lot of different metrics um, for the GSS team. Um, as you can see, one of my, well, my big uh, responsibility on this project um, was to bridge that gap between the production server and the SharePoint frame. So I kind of brought that, um, those Tableau reports home for the GSS members to be able to uh, access on a day-to-day -day basis. And those two um, red arrows on the very uh, right of the screen, um, those are just, that's kind of where I did a lot of my different, um, a lot of the different work there. Um, I made sure that all those, uh, across those six analyzers that every, um, every dashboard had that uniform look and feel um, for those uh, GSS members to go through and um, access on a day-to-day -day basis. And lastly, I got the opportunity to uh, learn how to code uh, navigation bars. I made sure that all those links to the correct dashboards pointed to the right um, analyzer on each page. So I really enjoyed uh, learning that and working alongside Howie Hancock really exposed me to um, a lot of different, a lot of different skill set that I didn't think I was gonna uh, get while I was here at Clorox. And um, this is just a few snapshots of some of those analyzers, and as you can see, they kind of have that same uh, uniform look across um, all of those. There, I believe that is the GSS dashboard itself, and this is the PO analyzer. All right, and um, the next project that I want to talk to you guys about is access to PSEC access to PSO reports. Um, so just a little bit of history about this process, um, I'm sorry, this project. It was a two-phase um, 
project on my end. It started about two years ago, um, and I was able to see it to an end during my time here at Clorox. So my phase, um, um, excuse me, my um, role on this project was to clean up the data that I had and to beautify the SharePoint site, make it a little bit more pleasing to the eye. Um, so um, the data that I had here was primarily just links to different reports, trying to find those links and making sure that everything was uniform and up to date and ready to report out. So um, with that being said, um, I just want to take you on a journey of the data, what it looked like before I um, got my hands on it and what it looks like today. So um, in about mid-September, this, um, this is what I was working with um, once I got through auditing all of the different uh, data entries on our uh, PSA, PSOA site. Um, so on the very left of the screen, I have about 40% of good data. The rest of that 60% needs some work. And the work that entailed me making sure that that data was cleaned up was just reaching out to different report owners, talking to them, making sure that I could uh, get um, updated files, of course, granting that PSEC access, making sure that if some of those reports weren't active, that they weren't being reported out on our site. Also, some of those data entries were not um, weren't entered correctly. So some of them had uh, blank spaces, and I just had to make sure that I eliminated those. And another one of the different uh, the different uh, function, the different uh, excuse me, the different ass uh, assignments that I had to do with the data was to make sure if some of those reports were sent out via email, to make sure that I could um, help the functions bring them over onto SharePoint and find them and find those reports at home on SharePoint, so they could be accessed um, in one central location. And this is another snapshot of the data that I had. So at about a month's time later, I was able to go from 40% to around uh, close to 70%. But as you can see, I still have a little bit of work to be done. And this is what the data looks like today. So it, it's come a long way. Um, this, and I'm happy to report that um, this uh, project is 100%. So this is a little bit outdated, excuse my. <laughs> Excuse my graph here, but um, the data is 100% and it's uh, up to date and it's ready to report out. All right, and I just want also to talk to you guys about the second half of my uh, project with this, uh, second half of the project. Um, so that's, that half was to beautify the site. Again, I worked alongside um, Howie Hancock and we got a chance to really create some really cool graphics um, for you guys to see when you visit that site. So on the very left, this is what um, this is what the site looked like uh, when I started out. It was just a normal um, SharePoint list. Those reports weren't really classified and they weren't organized um, to be able to better navigate through those. Um, so me and Howie, we set out and we uh, decided to separate those reports by function. Um, in the middle here, you can see that we assigned each function a tile and a color. And in that very last stage, I just got the opportunity to assign each function a cool graphic that I thought best described them. So again, I just got the opportunity to make sure that the site was pleasing to the eye and that it had some personality. And um, just making sure, again, that um, when PSEC members visit that site, that they, um, they, don't, get, they, don't, they don't get bored. <laughs> So um, yeah, and this is just another um, quick look at what the site looks like. So um, on that PSEC site, they have that purple button that says P PSO reports, and that just prompts them to this window that's housed on the PSOA site. And it's just that dashboard again with all the cool graphics and colors uh, set out to assign, that's assigned to each uh, different subfunction. Um, lastly, I want to talk to you guys about some of the things that I got a chance to work on while I was here at Clorox. So um, I was able, I had the honor to um, participate with a bunch of different ERGs while I was here. I worked um, with Sho um, at the sandwich packing event there. I was also um, a part of the eco team and we um, held the bird feeder event a few weeks ago in this room. Also, uh, one Saturday morning I woke up and I traveled to downtown Atlanta to um, participate with Able and Show on a hands-on Atlanta event. Also, another one of the cool things that I got to do while I was volunteering here at Clorox, I um, 
did a lot of work, um, but I did a lot of volunteer work with the youth in the community. Um, at the very top right here, this is a picture of me and some other scopes and interns. We got the opportunity to travel to downtown Atlanta um, to visit a church uh, in, in a, uh, I believe in Decatur, Georgia. Um, we got the opportunity to demo three different science experiments to elementary and middle school age children and just explain that science behind them and get them excited about different careers in the STEM industry. Also, um, me and some other interns also got a chance to travel to, I believe, Lawrenceville, Georgia, and we, um, we partnered with Junior Achievement, and we uh, got the chance to simulate running our own business with some local sixth graders in the community. Um, that day, we got a chance to develop different, um, set up different price points and develop marketing, um, marketing uh, methods uh, for the products that we sold that day, so I really had a good time um, being able to give back to the youth in the community while I was here. Um, and one of the cool things that I do want to highlight, um, also, um, while I was here at uh, Clorox, I got the opportunity to join um, the Tuskegee recruiting team. And in that, on that team, I got the chance to travel back down to Tuskegee. Um, we, um, I talked to a bunch of different students at my school about different opportunities through internships and jobs here at Clorox. That's me on the very end holding the award that uh, Clorox was awarded from Tuskegee um, Best Business in Class. Um, also, another one of the cool things that I wanted to um, highlight about this opportunity, um, I had the chance to develop a Snapchat filter. And it was the very first Snapchat filter ever developed for any career fair in the history of Clorox. Um, and the really cool thing about this Snapchat filter is that it had about 5,200 uses, but there's only about 3,300 students at Tuskegee. So while we were there um, talking to students, a lot of people came up to us and said they saw us on Snapchat and they wanted to get a chance to learn more about Clorox, so that was a huge success. Um, and last, I just want to end on my takeaways. So being bold was like one of the first things that I heard at, on my first day here at Clorox. And over time, I really just got the opportunity to develop my own definition of being bold. Um, for me, uh, now being bold is just being comfortable with being uncomfortable. Um, there's a quote, I'm not sure who said it, but um, they, they just simply quoted, if you're not doing something every day that scares you, you're not living bold enough. Um, so today I'm presenting um, my final presentation to senior level management for a Fortune 500 company so I can check being bold off my list today. <laughs> um, again, thinking like an analyst, I kind of touched on it a little bit at the beginning of my um, presentation. Um, just going through, getting exposed to different data and finding that sweet spot, that uh, pattern that can help you better maneuver through and understand the data and ask the right questions. Uh, definitely develop my skills there. And last, inclusion is key. Um, that's definitely a big, big thing here at the, in the Clorox culture. Um, inclusion is not only just making sure that everyone has a seat at the table, but making sure that everyone has a voice. And it definitely shows that everyone has a voice here at Clorox just through the success of the company. And once again, I just want to thank everyone that I got a chance to spend some time with. It really means a lot for everyone that I got to um, talk to, just for you guys to take time out of your busy schedule to help me grow as an individual. It definitely is something that I appreciate and I will not forget. And lastly, I just want to open up the floor for questions.